This is the fourth most viewed video on Wrecked Radio. This hairstyle didn't look like a ratted disaster. And this is Jess Paul. Last week, we spun on mashup. And I had to dig a little bit into my old blueprints to figure out wh what I ever thought that I could do for this category. And I found a pretty good one. For all my longest time viewers, you will remember this fondly, I'm sure, that for every single episode of my show Wrecked Radio that I filmed for about a year, I styled my hair like a scene kid. I admit I thought I looked really dope for the time, but um, I think we're gonna be messing up my hair today. <laughs> For today's mashup, we're going to take Wrecked Radio and Selfism and we're going to put them together to create a brand new tutorial following my old tutorial of how I used to do my hair. And in classic reaction video fashion, we're going to watch the old tutorial, which is apparently still on YouTube. It was uploaded nine years ago. <laughs> And it has a quarter of a million views, so uh, decade old and uh, still popular with the kids. Every week I've seen it up for you on Wrecked Radio, and now I'm finally going to tell you how uh, this happens. Hairspray, faith, miracles, probably all those things. This tutorial from the very beginning on what my hair looks like when I wake up. I don't look directly into it. Wow, how dramatic that Jessica. bad, is it? This is my hair when I practically I woke up this morning like this. <laughs> Um, I, like I had up, um, see the, my shorts layer like really on here, and I have blunt bangs. But even with all that, uh, I still do this scene emo hair every week for Rec Radio. Special effects, straight and shiny, extra strength, anti-frizz hair serum. So now we're actually getting into the meat of the tutorial. We've got our first product and our first step. I do remember that exact serum that I used to use, and I gotta say, I'm, I'm not a fan anymore. I retired it a long time ago and stopped purchasing it because it was so thick and syrupy and sticky that I'm not really sure why I ever liked putting in my hair. I guess I was just willing to do anything to make sure it just stayed down after a while. But today I'm going to use something that I've recommended before. I still use it to this day. It is Garnier uh, Sleek and Shine. This is a serum. It's very oil-like, but it is lightweight and not sticky, and it makes your hair feel so soft as well as frizz controlled. Wow. Thanks, Jessica, for your non-paid commercial. So I already have some of this in my hair, but we're gonna apply more so that we can straighten it to superb fleekness. Don't ever say that again, Jessica. And look, you guys, I finally installed a mirror as if that was so hard to do where I'm sitting right where I am. As for my straightener today, I am using Plugged In Wet or Dry Straightener. I'm a fan of Plugged In. They use Tourmaline in their hot metals. So whenever I do straighten my hair, which is not very often because my hair being bleach bottle blonde, it looks damaged when it's completely straight as opposed to kind of having some body and curl to it. But today, we gonna do it because we trying to scene it up, as 2011 Jess Paul said, because she's the epitome of cool. This guy has detailed heat controls too, so that you know exactly how hot this thing is getting, and it heats up incredibly fast. Pretty fast. All the tools and supplies that I'm using today is going to be down in the description if you're uh, following along and you wanna do this yourself, or if you just like my recommendations of the tools individually. Smell that hot iron heating up. This is a look. And along with my straightening iron, I also use this little tool. I've been using this kind of thing for years. Did not clean it enough for camera, did you, Jessica? This is a double-sided brush that's basically going to create a pathway for my straightener to run as smoothly as possible. When you're trying to get your hair pin straight and perfect, you want to make sure that your hair is separated, not free, tangle-free. I actually broke this a while ago and just glued it together this morning, so let's, uh, let's see how long this lasts today. Oh. Never mind. Well, now that I look like punk rock Barbie, let's continue, shall we? What does little Jessica say to do next? My haircut includes two layers of dramatically different lengths. Uh, first secret of the bunch, I cut it myself. Big, big surprise. I still cut my hair myself, so I don't know what that says about me, but still, still going at it. The song that you're hearing in this, by the way, is one of my old Wrecked Radio Dial bands. I used to have up-and-coming bands 
basically anybody who had a song and possibly a music video to show on the shows because I loved giving opportunities to people that didn't necessarily have a voice. It was like my one way that I felt like I could contribute and give back and help others within, you know, the genre of rock music. I'll look them up. If they're still around, I'll put their link down below. I have blunt bangs usually, so what I usually have to do for the show is take a, a strand of my hair um, from my left side of my head and bring it over bangs. and hairspray it over. I recommend Bedhead by TG, which is Hardhead. The first step in the styling process is I put my hair completely up and then individually take out the different strands. All right. Um, so I gotta tell you guys something about myself, as if that's not what I do every single week anyways. Over the years, I have developed an absolute hatred for hairspray. I don't know exactly when that happened because I, as you see, used to use it all the time. But as I got older and really started to care a little bit more about the health and feel of my hair, I avoided using hairspray literally every instance I could. To this day, when I'm in a movie or I go to a very important event, I still do not use hairspray. Sticky. It's stiff. It makes my head hurt. I don't know if that's just psychological or if there's really something to that. And when I use it, I feel that I absolutely have to wash it out of my hair before I go to bed at night, or else I feel like I'm being poisoned. And it's it, it, it's as, it's any hairspray. I don't I don't really discriminate against which ones I hate. It's just the idea. I brought this from Pittsburgh when I moved here to Los Angeles over a year ago. And I don't think I've used it yet, if I'm remembering correctly. But we're gonna use it today. What an adventure. I don't think I've ever done my scene hair with my blonde hair. Because I retired that style way before I ever... Well, there was that year in college when I was doing Rec Radio that I, that I absolutely ruined my hair and started wearing wigs. I'm not sure if I ever styled it then, but God knows it probably didn't look good because nothing looked good with that abomination of a of a dye job. That was a weird time. <sighs> Bring on the plastic mask. Actually, that's not that bad. I'm like worried about these ends here, but to be honest, I usually had that anyways. Like it just always happened. Next step texture brush it has both uh, uh, yes. uh, small bristles and big plastic bristles and I tease my hair <laughs> yes that was a thing that I did memories pull the top layer out why couldn't I separate them from the beginning I no longer have that specific brush, but I do have this that I carry in my purse, and I think it'll be great for teasing. What I would do is I would take the very top layers that you see on the outside, and I would keep them very straight so that, like, this hairstyle didn't look like a ratted disaster. Spray the insides. Ugh. I'm already starting to get anxious. And get it... Oh my god, look at all that damage flying. Get as close to the root as possible, making that kind of the meat of the body and then I would brush over the top making sure that the outside still looked okay. <laughs> Is it still looking okay? We need more hairspray. Something I've never said. I feel like I'm really holding back. Like I, I'm trying not to kind of mess up my hair. Oh yeah, I remember like I used to try to get kind of the back as big as possible so it looked like these big <sighs> popping yawn ears. Oh my gosh. Go big or go home, baby! Ew. Oh goodness me. I don't like that at all. Whoa. Okay, that's not what I was going for. <laughs> We've got lift off! <laughs> I feel a little more Long Island medium than I do Rec Radio Just Paul. <laughs> you know, it, it, I think it looks a lot more dramatic in person than it does on camera, or at least I think it does. I'm not sure. Because when I look into the viewfinder, it's. It doesn't look as shocking. I talk to Ghost and I make spaghetti every Saturday night kind of vibes. Wow, I didn't know Teresa Caputo was a wannabe scene kid. <laughs> Old Jessica very specifically would cut this layer as sparsely as possible, leaving only a few little strands of hair to make this look uh, very heart-shaped. But I think this is as close as we're gonna get today. So what do you think about 2020 uh, scene hair? 
Like, I never wear this anywhere, but it looks kind of cool, right? I hope you guys enjoyed this little walk down memory lane. Like, I think if I walked into a rock show like this, I bet I'd get a lot of compliments, but also a lot of people would ask me if I could talk to their dead grandparents for them. This week we're going to give the wheel another little break because I have a lot of videos that I want to show you guys having to do with some of the Friday live episodes. We started a lot of really cool art projects on the live shows, but I'd also like to give you some resolution as to what they ended up being because we can only stay online so long. Have a good week, punkers, and this is my outro. And because I forgot to say so while I was filming, I'm going to do a peace, love, rock, and roll.